Imagine you were given a dataset of sales data over time and you need to create some quick calculations on this data using Power BI and you need to do it quickly. But you have one problem, you don't know how to code in Power BI. Well in this video we're going to look at quick measures in order to make common but powerful calculations with your reports. Hi, my name is Fernand from Solutions Abroad. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe to keep up to date with all the videos that I upload in this channel. So you're probably wondering what kind of calculations I'm talking about, or what the heck quick measures are. Now if you already know what quick measures are and what they do and don't need an explanation, go ahead and skip to the next section. In this video, we're gonna go through how easy it is to add quick measures to your reports. So to explain this, it's probably going to be easier if I show you. So we have an Excel file here which has some basic data like sales over time and we have two different regions here EU and US who have two different sales figures so let's start by bringing this data into Power BI so we can start analyzing it so from Power BI desktop select get data from Excel let's look for our Excel workbook tick the table data and hit load. This will import your data in Excel into the Power BI file. If you're curious what this import does to your data, I made a separate video where I talk about what importing does and also another way for you to bring in data into your report. So check it out. So let's now add a table into our report and bring in all the data that we have. So the dates, region and sales. Let's disable the hierarchy for now since we don't need it. You'll see that this view is pretty much the same as what we see in our Excel file. You can even see that Power BI has added a total for us, which essentially is a calculation that Power BI automatically makes for us. You'll see that if we go to format, and under total, you can modify this or even remove it if you want. Now what's interesting about this is that the total is actually being done in the context of this table. So what do I mean by that? So for example, let's apply a filter to this table. Let's say we want to just see the EU sales figures. You'll see that as soon as I select just EU in this filter, the total numbers recalculate. It now only totals up the sales figures for EU. We can double check this by going back to our Excel file and filtering to EU. You can see that some value there is the same as the one we have on Power BI. This feature where the result is being recalculated based on the data displayed is what we call context. It's important to have a little bit of understanding on this because measures work off the same concept. You're gonna need to be able to explain what your data does, why it's showing the numbers that it does. So while you're not gonna need to know how to write DAX, it's really important for you to learn how it derives to that answer. Anyway, back to our Power BI report let's clear this filter which brings us the US and EU data back. Let's remove the region column from this table by clicking this X icon right next to the region column. Now pay close attention to the sales results for July 2020 as I click to remove the region column. Did you see that? It grouped the sales from EU and US into the same date because that is the context of our data table. If we go back to our Excel table and highlight the July 2020 you'll see that the sum is the same as a result as what we have here. Again, because the region is removed from the context, Power BI grouped these to whatever the table has, which in this case, just the date. Now the column adds up the sales value as its aggregation, but you can change that by clicking this icon under sales. You can choose from a number of aggregation types that Power BI provides you. Let's choose average from this list. Now you'll see that the Power BI renames that column and changes the calculations on each month. It now calculates the average sales for both regions on every month. It even gives you a total average across all your dates. We can confirm this by going back to our source file so we can manually calculate the average. If you highlight the sales column, you'll see that the result we have is the same as what we have in our Power BI report. Highlighting July sales also shows us the average sales for that month, which as you can see is the same result as what we have in our report. At this point, you're probably wondering why do I keep going back and forth between the source file and the Power BI report? Well, firstly, I just wanted to demonstrate to you what the measure calculations actually do. And secondly, data validation is really important when it comes to reporting. You don't want to be in a situation where somebody asks you why a certain chart is a certain way and you don't know how to answer it. I had this problem in the past, so a client asked me why a bar chart is showing a certain number, what types of filter was applied to it, uh, and how it's being calculated, but I don't 
that didn't know the answer at the time and it, it was really embarrassing. So uh, do your data validation, don't be like me. Quite a tangent for me, but now that you know what aggregations do, let's move back to quick measures. Now, the easiest way to add a quick measure is through this quick measure button under the calculations ribbon. If you select the drop down under calculation, you'll see a bunch of calculations that you can use for your measure. Conveniently, they're grouped based on categories. So we touched on aggregations earlier, like the average. Now looking at this list, we want to be looking at the time intelligence section because our data set has date elements in it. So let's keep it simple. Let's add year to date total. Let's drag the sales column in the base value and the date under date. If you hit okay, you'll see that Power BI creates something, what we call a measure. You'll know that something is a measure by the calculator icon right next to its name. Now don't be confused, measure is just a fancy way of saying it's a calculation. The reason it's called a measure is because it's written in DAX, which is the expression language in Power BI. If you select this measure, it will show up the formula bar and the DAX code that Power BI automatically created for you. Now you'll see a bunch of code stuff, but don't worry about it for now. I just wanted to show you what Power BI does when you add a quick measure. So it writes all this code for you. So let's delete this table that we created. Let's add the bar chart instead. In the bar chart, let's add date and our new measure sales year to date. You'll see that it now gives you your total sales year to date. Now, if I go back to my Excel, and get the total sales for 2020, you'll see that it's the same as what we have in our Power BI. Let's add another measure, shall we? Let's say we wanted to get the running total for our sales. So this time, let's look at our sales column, select the ellipsis, and then new quick measure. Under calculation, select running total. You can see that Power BI automatically adds sales to our base value because of how we added the new quick measure earlier. Let's add the date field into this and select OK. Now let's Let's add a new table with the date column and the sales column. Let's remove the hierarchy on the date again. Let's now add our running total measure into this column. So I brought in the normal sales column because I want you to see what the running total does. It adds the total number of sales for the current month as well as the total number of sales on the previous months. So this measure is really useful if you're doing any cumulative totals without having to know how to script. So if we convert this into a line chart, you'll see our running totals side by side with our total. Now you know how to use quick measures to your advantage. You can create really powerful calculations to your data without knowing a single line of code. I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please leave a like. It really helps me grow out this channel and reach out to more people. Let me know if you enjoyed this type of content in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions or feedback, get in touch. I'm leaving my email address as well as my social media accounts in the description box below. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.